Business Pulse is all about business all the time. And we're going to be talking about on this show and other shows, we're going to be talking about uh, starting a business, growing your business, raising capital, how to raise capital, how to find investors, uh, what's a private placement, what's a Reg A+, plus, all the terms you might have heard watching some of the financial shows or reading the Wall Street Journal, we're going to be talking about on the show. We're going to be interviewing uh, people from Shark Tank. We're going to be interviewing cl uh, past clients of mine, uh, new clients. And we're going to be talking about things that you need to know and understand if you're going to start a business, expand a business, and raise capital for your business. There's a lot of myths out there about everything that we're going to be talking about on the show. We hope to clarify some of those for you. Um, a couple of things, though. Uh, we're not going to be giving legal advice. We're not financial planners. And we're not going to give recommendations as to certain investment vehicles. This is all about business, starting a business, growing a business, financing a business, uh, how to attract investment capital, how to structure your offering. We're going to be talking about valuations and why is evaluation for your business important. So we're going to answer a lot of those questions. We're going to have a lot of experts on the show to answer, take your calls, emails, and right now we're going to get into uh, an interview with a friend of mine and a client of mine, Elite Beverage International. And they have a product, a kind of flagship product called uh, Tequila Commissario. And I have my guest here, the president of the company, Luis Cota. Luis, how are you? Good morning, Michael. Doing well. Thank you for having me today. Good, good. Um, well, let's get into it as far as the uh, – we'll, we'll talk about Elite Beverage uh, as a concept, but I want to get into – um, the actual product itself that, that is the flagship, which is Tequila Commissario. And when I mentioned it, uh, I've been involved with the company now for about four years. I've known you and Steve Rice and the management team for a long time. But when I first started mentioning it to people about uh, a tequila, they'd roll their eyes mm -hmm. and say, oh, my God, another tequila. Mm -hmm. But this is a very uh, award-winning tequila. Mm -hmm. So let's get into that. What is so special about uh, Commissario Tequila? Well, Michael, today's tequila is an incredible product, and uh, it's no longer your grandfather's tequila. It's a product that competes very well with the best brown spirits of the world. If you like single malt scotch, if you like whiskey and bourbon and small handcrafted brown spirits, Tequila Comisario plays in that field very nicely. It's a wonderful balance of pure 100% blue agave. Uh, and in the age expressions with Reposado and Añejo, wonderful uh, oak aging in a very balanced sort of way so that the taste um, profile appeals very nicely to the mature consumer of brown spirits across the world. So it's got great potential in that respect. Good. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I understand from reading some of the literature that you've uh, – won a number of awards over the years, double mm -hmm. gold, uh, best uh, mm -hmm. Blanco mm -hmm. tequila in the world from Cigar Spirits magazine. Mm -hmm. um, tell us uh, the, the, the journey that mm -hmm. you've taken with this over mm -hmm. the last couple of years uh, as far as establishing mm -hmm. the brand mm -hmm. and, and then uh, getting into national distribution. So let's start with establishing the brand. Well, my partners and I were very fortunate to meet Dr. Roy Morita, who created the brand back about nine, ten years ago and sort of um, worked at a very small pace, and we met him, ironically enough, at the All-Star Game in, I believe, 2012. Uh, when he was getting to the end of his rope with the project from a sales and marketing point of view, we met, we talked, we agreed to do something, we began to advise him, and eventually bought out the brand. And we finished paying for the brand in 2014, and then we spent the next two to three years just entering a number of competitions, uh, awards, tastings, those kind of things, to make sure that the brand had a sort of a you know, a pedigree, if you will, when we, we went out to the trade. So since that time to now, we've become probably the most awarded tequila in the world. Uh, we won, for example, a double gold at China Wine and Spirits, which is the, the most reputable competition in the world out of China. Um, Cigar and Spirits magazine named us the best new tequila of 2016. Uh, they also named our Blanco the number one tequila for margaritas, uh, in their issue, la one of their issues last year. So we've had a plethora of awards, whether it's San Francisco International Wine Competition, uh, the Wine and Spirits Wholesalers of America, which is the largest wholesalers convention, just took place literally four weeks ago, and our Reposado won double gold. And by the way, double gold, which we won over 10 of them for all three categories, means that every single judge in that, in that judging 
unanimously agreed that that particular commissario was the best of the competition and gave it all of their votes. So double gold means a lot. Along with that, in our industry, whether it's wine or spirits, most of us work with a 100-point scale, uh, whether you find it in the wine spectator for wines or in the spirits segment. We've gotten a ton of 98, 97, 96-point scores. So the brand has responded very, very well. The experts are saying it. And now that we've got that beautiful pedigree and we've got wonderful awards that we use in our advertising have begun to roll out over the past 14 to 15 months across the country. And it's going very well, Michael. We've gotten, uh, we're nearly in 30 states now, so it's coming along very nicely and very fast. Now, in those 30 states, who do you sell to? Do you mm -hmm. sell to a distributor, mm -hmm. and then the distributor then sells to retail mm -hmm. establishments? Explain that process a little bit. That is correct. Uh, after the re repeal of prohibition in 1934, the federal government gave control to each state of their liquor sales uh, authority so that each state then decides how to do it. There are 18 states in which the state itself is the actual wholesaler who sells to retailers and to restaurateurs and hotels. The other 32 states or so allow independent businessmen to be wholesalers. So here in California, for example, we have uh, Southern Wine and Spirits, we have Young's Market Company, we have Wine Warehouse, and they are multi-brand distributors who then call themselves, along with their salespeople, on hotels, restaurants, bars, and retail accounts. So it's a pretty complex three-tier system. was meant to originally uh, you know, encourage control of alcoholic beverages, um, and it's now so entrenched that that's what we live with. Excellent. We've talked about the awards, we've talked about the distribution that you have, but you haven't, the company hasn't always been at this level of mm -hmm. success. Mm -hmm. I know uh, you were a startup at mm -hmm. one time, you mm -hmm. had the struggles, like a lot of startups, mm -hmm. which is, you know, trying to get your, your footing, trying to get your foot in the door, mm -hmm. trying to establish the brand. So when you started out, aside from the money aspect, mm -hmm. you know, what were some of the challenges that you had in convincing people to... Uh, recognize your product mm -hmm. well one of the biggest challenges of course in our business is that there's there's these major brands and I'll be happy to mention them because we're part happy to be part of them whether it's Patron or Don Julio or Casa Amigos or Herradura or Clase Azul brands that have been around for quite a while and they are entrenched in the consumer's mind the retailer's mind the restaurateur's mind and the distributor's mind and for the distributor they produce quite a bit of revenue so for a new brand to come along no matter how good it may be it's a real challenge to be to get attention to be noticed to be able to get into your distributor or to talk to your local restaurant and bar or retail owner to pay attention to you because you are new. So that's been a real challenge in a category that is really getting quite busy. I mean, legally in Mexico, there are not 1,900 plus brands registered in Mexico of tequila. There's 198 distilleries in Mexico. So it's beginning becoming a very crowded field. So you have to be really unique to stand out from the crowd. Um, the other thing that is happening to tequila, and particularly to us, is this entire premiumization trend that is going on in America. You know, Americans, we have learned to eat better, drink better, drive better. We like our fancy cars, we like our fancy restaurants, and we like our fancy wine and spirits. So premiumization, because it gives you a better spirit, uh, a better product for your dollar, is taking hold in America in a very big way. And we're very much a part of that. And if anything, I would say that even though we're a small brand and we're becoming known, we're probably the leader in terms of being a true premium from the field and seed to the bottle. We make sure that everything we do, we control it properly. That's excellent to know from from a uh, distributor standpoint. But how do you get, or how have you uh, been able to convince the consumer mm -hmm. that if they go into a liquor store, mm -hmm. they go into a bar, a lounge, mm -hmm. that they're, they mm -hmm. instead of ordering Patron, they're going to want to order Tequila mm -hmm. Commissario? Mm -hmm. What 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 kind of tastings have you done, if any at mm -hmm. all, mm -hmm. to really convince the consumer mm -hmm. that they should mm -hmm. take a look at this product and sample it? Well, not only have we taken part in many consumer events. For example, Cigar and Spirits Magazine here does uh, a number of events yearly in which are, they are consumer-directed events, and they get attendance of between 500 to 1,000. So we've done those kind of events here in Texas, in New York. So we do a lot of consumer events to encourage trial. We also, as part of what we do from a marketing point of view, particularly in re in restaurant and bar accounts, we do seminars and tastings in those outlets where it's legal to taste. So we do a lot of 
consumer trial, and that's the ultimate. If you get the consumer to try it, we know we're going to win. So we do a lot of our marketing, a lot of our direction, and our focus is spent on consumer tasting, consumer education, uh, and even some of our activations that we've done in terms of large hotel chains and large restaurant chains are all about how do we educate not only the consumer, but also the restaurant manager, the bar manager, the bartenders, the servers, because they ultimately have the most contact with the consumer. So we spend a lot of effort in that direction to do trial. So those were some of the challenges uh, starting out with your product is, all right, now we've got to convince the consumer to buy mm -hmm. this product. Mm -hmm. We also have to convince distributors to carry the product. Mm -hmm and uh, you know, get people to actually sample it because of all mm -hmm. the tequilas that mm -hmm. are on the market mm -hmm. right now. Um, let's talk about the actual tequilas itself. I notice we have several samples mm -hmm. here on the, on the table. Mm -hmm. Obviously the Blanco, the White, uh, Respado, and we have the Anejo. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't know this until I started working with you closely. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference as far as the color mm -hmm. and how do you get to the color. Mm -hmm. So explain that to, mm -hmm. to our listeners. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, when you start out with the Blanco, I kind of, I didn't really know how the dark got dark until you <laughs> explained to me. C cover that yeah. with our listeners here. Well, in the tequila world, it's commonly said that if you make a good Blanco, the other expressions, the Reposado and Añejo, are going to be wonderful products. So the Blanco is the base product that gets put into a barrel. Um, and then the longer it's in the barrel, the darker it gets. So the color comes from the wood the American oak that we use. So for example, by law in Mexico, uh, you take that silver and you put it into a barrel. After two months of being in the barrel, it can legally be called reposado. The word reposado means rested in Spanish. So it has to be at least two months. There's no upside to how long you can have it. Ours is aged by for seven months. That same reposado, when it goes over a year of being in the barrel, becomes añejo. And the añejo has to be at least 12 months of age in the barrel. Um, ours goes 23 months, and by the way, at the end of 20, at the end of 19 months, we take those American whiskey oak barrels and we put that product into a California red wine barrel to just give it a touch more complexity. Come, kind of unique. There's a lot of experimentation going on in our industry, and that's one of the things that we do. Um, but to that point, so silver is what creates a great tequila brand, uh, and to a lot of consumers, silver can be a little bit perhaps rough because it's the best expression of fruit. Uh, the profile of the agave fruit is peppery, earthy, and spicy. You can make it in a very elegant way. You can make it in a very rustic way. We think we make a very elegant silver because after the second distillation, we put it back into a stainless steel tank and we shoot it full of oxygen for 36 hours. What that does is just breaks up every single drop into 100,000 molecules. When it gets reconstituted, it becomes just a touch creamier, a touch softer. It's still peppery, earthy, spicy as it should be for silver, but it's a little bit more elegant. And then... That silver gets bottled and gets sold, but the part of the silver that we put into the barrel to become Reposado Rañejo then uh, goes into oak that when we bought it was, was already two years or older. We want to buy old oak because we want a very subtle leaching of the wood impact onto the, onto the juice. And the idea being that you keep a balance between the fruit flavors, which are earth, pepper, and spice, and the barrel flavors, which are oak, vanilla, and caramel. So if you do it correctly with an older barrel, have a very subtle, elegant leaching, you end up with the best of both worlds, fruit and oak being very well balanced. So this is the first start. Then this goes in, this gets, part of it gets bottled and sold. Then the reposado is the silver that spent two months or more. And the añejo is the silver that spent 12 months or more in the barrel. Now you mentioned earlier in the conversation um, in, uh, several times mm -hmm. that tequila comes from Mexico. Mm -hmm. Now, I know, I didn't know that, mm -hmm. again, until I started working with your company. Um, and I'm sure maybe a lot of the listeners mm -hmm. don't really realize that to be authentic tequila, mm -hmm. it has to come from a certain region in Mexico. Go into a little bit of that educational process. Correct. You know, some of the great brands of the world, whether it's a cognac or a single malt scotch or a champagne or a Napa Cabernet, come from a very small defined area. Napa Valley or the Cognac region or the Champagne region in which that particular product from that region has been grown there for so many hundreds of years that it's really kind of innate to that area. So 100% Blue Ever Agave from Jalisco and the four states neighboring it is the only region where it can legally be grown, the 100% Blue Ever Agave for tequila, just like Napa Cabernet only comes from Napa or just like, you know, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay used in Champagne for Champagne only come from Champagne. So there's a legally protected area, uh, and it's called an appellation in, in terms of the industry, is a very unique place where that 
particular plant does incredibly well, uh, whether it's the soil or the rain or the heat. After hundreds of years of experimentation, we've come to the point that that plant grows very well there. Then it becomes legally protected. So tequila is, in fact, um, legally protected. Mexico has treaties with 180 countries to protect the appellation uh, of tequila. And there's been cases where people have tried to make tequila in other countries, and there's been you know lawsuits, and there's been fights, legal fights, and it's been very well protected. So that's what makes a single malt scotch or a champagne or a tequila such a valuable thing. It's unique to its very little tiny area of Mexico where it comes from. Now, are there tequilas that are made here in the United States? Mm-hmm. Um, that are passed off as authentic tequilas? or um, So there is a category called mixto, which means mixed. Legally, you could ship up to here bladders of tequila and do what is called mixto or mixed tequila, which is 51% agave and 49% something else, whether it's neutral grain spirits, <laughs> caramel coloring, water, and that's pretty much where you find the stuff for $9.99, $8.99. And if you dare drink that, and you know that happens to a lot of categories, including vodka and whatever. So at the low end, yes, you can do it up here. The success of tequila, though, is because of 100% blue agave only. No additives, no colorings. No, it's 100% pure product, and it has to be grown, distilled, fermented, distilled, barreled, and bottled in Mexico. And there's inspectors that come by every week to every single distillery to make sure that it's being done properly down there. And that's the, the nature of it. If it's 100% blue agave, it's great quality, and it's grown in Mexico. Mm-hmm. <laughs> When I was younger, my first experience uh, with tequila, <laughs> probably mm-hmm. as most people, mm-hmm. was with that cheaper brand that, you know, we really didn't know what we were drinking, mm-hmm. but we'd do the shots. The next day I paid for it, and I stopped drinking yeah. tequila mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. many, many, many years yeah. for that reason. Mm-hmm. But I have to admit, when I started sampling uh, the mm-hmm. product and everything, it's almost like a cognac. Mm-hmm. You know, it's you don't really, at mm-hmm. least I don't, I, mm-hmm. I don't mix it with mm-hmm. anything. I just mm-hmm. want to pour it in a maybe a snifter mm-hmm. or, a, you Correct. know, a small glass mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and just kind of sip uh, sip yeah. it and savor it along with a nice Cuban cigar yeah. or mm-hmm. something. That's, you know, my relation with your product, with your tequila. You're listening to Business Pulse, and this is my guest, Luis Cota, and he's from um, uh, Elite Beverage International, and their flagship product is what we have here on the desk, which is the Tequila Commissario. And you can go to their website, which is uh, www tequilacommissario.com. You can get uh, a lot of information about the product. Mm-hmm. You can also contact them directly through the website. And uh, before the show is over, we'll have Luis give you his uh, direct contact information as far as his emails, so if you'd mm-hmm. want to email and get additional product. Mm-hmm. Um, I read uh, the newsletter that you put together a short time ago mm-hmm. and sent it to me, mm-hmm. and there was something, you have the MGM Grand, Correct. Uh, prod- or your product is going into the MGM mm-hmm. Grand in mm-hmm. the casinos in Las Vegas. Tell us a little mm-hmm. bit about that. And if you can, mm-hmm. uh, I, I received some uh, photographs from uh, Steve Rice, mm-hmm. your associate, mm-hmm. that showed the T-Mobile Center in mm-hmm. Las Vegas. So mm-hmm. if you can talk about mm-hmm. that in relation to the MGM Grand, I'd like our listeners to know about that too. Well, you know, um, at least in my viewpoint, I think most people in the industry uh, will tell you that a brand is built in a in a high class or a well-run restaurant bar or hotel because that's where you get a consumer trial i mean if you if you're at the local bevmo or local liquor store people will take it home but if you're if you have guests that are traveling or on vacation they go to their hotel their bar and they try it there and they fall in love with it that's where reputations get built for big brands or for for quality brands so you know, for us to be um basically a startup brand just in our second year and to be accepted by MGM globally as one of their key brands is an incredible success story. Uh, part of it is that, you know, uh, I think that the people understand what we're trying to achieve at MGM, but what's in this bottle, as pretty as the bottle is, what's inside the bottle is a fascinating product, well-balanced, well-aged, uh, competes globally with any spirit. So part of what enthused MGM was what's in the bottle, you know, uh, and in terms of the quality of it all. And so MGM approved us globally. They've got 16 hotels in Las Vegas. They've got Michigan, they've got Atlantic City, they've got Macau, they've got Shanghai. We're approved for all of those. So we just started. So, you know, we're going three hotels, four hotels, five hotels across the Vegas Strip. We already are in Michigan. We've got Atlantic City approved. So we're making great progress. And to me, that's what builds a brand. It's nice to have a a little five-case display at your corner liquor store. But if you want the aura and reputation of being a world-class brand, you're going to do it by being at the MGM Park or at the, you know, at the... um, uh, 
uh, what's the new place, New York, New York, or Bellagio, some of the units that they have. I mean, Las Vegas, you know, there's Las Vegas, New York, and L.A. in terms of marketing hubs for a brand, and, and we're doing very well in all three of those, without a doubt. As a matter of fact, we started with MGM just three or four months ago, and they contacted us and said to us, hey, we have an opportunity for you to be involved with T-Mobile Arena. And T-Mobile Arena has become the number one arena in America and probably the world in terms of events and marketing and, and, uh, um, and uh, internet uh, space. The uh, Las Vegas Golden Knights of the NHL made an incredible impact on in our first year. So uh, they offered us the opportunity to become the uh, sponsor tequila for the venue. And so we've, uh, we've agreed to do that. We're about to finalize our contract. We're going to be the single tequila in all the bars and all the menus. There will be a commissario lounge at T-Mobile Arena. They'll have other tequilas, like they have other products listed, but we're going to be the key sponsoring tequila. And for a brand like ours, to be able to achieve that is an incredible success. Believe me, we're so proud to be able to have that. Mm -hmm. uh, you're listening to Business Pulse. I'm the host, Michael Brett, and my guest is a personal friend of mine, uh, Luis Cota. His company is Elite Beverage International, and again, their flagship product is uh, Tequila Commissario. But real quick, before we wrap up the show, you do have a wine mm -hmm. category also. Mm -hmm. uh, just go into briefly a little bit of the mm -hmm. history about mm -hmm. the wines mm -hmm. and, and some of the wines that mm -hmm. you do have available. Just so, just so the listeners know you're not a one-trick pony. No, we are very proud to be associated with the Sensi Winery of Tuscany, uh, uh, three, four generations of family ownership since 1895. They make incredible Proseccos, and by the way, Prosecco, which is the Italian version of Champagne, uh, are on fire. They've actually passed Champagne in consumption in America. So they make great Proseccos, they make traditional Chiantis and um, uh, Brunellos and uh, Pinot Grigios, and so it's a wonderful little brand, Sensi. Uh, it's in I think it's in like 30, 40 countries. We're in about 20 states with it here in America as well and growing nicely. But Massimo Sensi and his family create a world-class product, and it's an incredible place to visit in Tuscany. It's one of those bucket lists that we all want to do. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Uh, give our listeners your email address. They can get a hold of you and, and if they want to. Mm -hmm discuss more about the product or mm -hmm. maybe they're a uh, you know, liquor store or distributor mm -hmm. they might yeah. want to handle the product so give but them your direct contact information by all means my direct email happy to pass it on it's luis l-u-i-s at elitebeverage.com you can also contact info at elitebeverage.com please and we, we do look at that all the time I have great contacts there so feel free to contact us anytime Excellent, excellent. Again, you've been listening to Business Pulse. I'm your host, Michael Brett. We're going to be doing this show every Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific time, uh, here on OT, OC Talk Radio. Uh, and it's also an international podcast show. So we, it's going to be on uh, iTunes. It's going to be on uh, Google Play. Uh, and also, it, you know, we, we might be on uh, Thomson Reuters financial sites as well. So uh, if you're looking to uh, get some exposure for your product, uh, whether it's a consumer product, whether it's a technology company, uh, internet-based company, whether it's in the cannabis space. Uh, if you want to be a sponsoring guest on our show, you can send me an email. My email is Mike Brett. That's Mike Brett, B-R-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, at gmail.com. And I will get back to you on your emails. And we are looking for additional guests to appear on our show. So if you find yourself uh, in a position where you have an inter interesting company, interesting product, we'd like to hear from you. If you're an expert when it comes to startups, uh, if you're a business attorney, an accountant, uh, somebody that's an angel investor, uh, I'd like to hear from you also. We'd like to feature you on the, com on the show here to give our listeners uh, the meat they need to succeed. And that's the whole purpose of our show is to give news that you can use to start a business and grow a business, because that's what we're all about on this show is business all the time. And I want to thank you for tuning into our show today. Again, go to iTunes, go to Google Play, look for the segments on all the social media sites like LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and I'd love to hear from you. Again, Mike Barrett at gmail.com. Thank you.